Hello everyone, um, watching a game here, ranked game between two five stacks, uh, skill level, we're looking at legends and ancients, and yeah, I'm sort of keen to see how this game goes and see what I can learn from it to integrate into my own gameplay. If anyone happens to stumble across this video who doesn't know me, um, I am um, just counter strike Anyway, um, yeah, anyway, I'm a Crusader level player, so I'm not very good. Um, I'm quite happy to admit that. Uh, so these guys are Legends and Ancients, these are solid players, and hopefully not so sort of extremely good like these sort of Divine Fives, where uh, some of the things they do are just really difficult to integrate into low tier pub play. So, observing this at the moment, to say this outright, I don't like Dyer's Draft. I don't think there's a whole lot they can do to fight them off this room. So yeah, room wise, not great for Radiant, just get the one, but not to worry. Um, it's not the end of the world. I don't like Dyer's Draft because <clears throat> it looks like they're running a safe lane Ember Spirit, which seems odd to me. We do have Mid Shadow Fiend, which is traditional of course. Um, so they pick up his quelling blade in the side shops rather than picking it up at the uh, fountain, yeah, so making use of that um, bounty gold. Uh, nice, blo nice block actually for Max. Um, but yeah, it seems odd. Running his tri lane, Wisp, Pudge, Ember Spirit, it just seems odd. I, I, <clears throat> I don't feel like Ember Spirit's going to win them the game, this is the problem. He's, he's not really a hard carry. Uh, whereas Basis Void using the solo off lane can be. Um, and you can have a uh, sort of more utility core void, that's fine. Um, but just. Um, but I don't feel that the utility core void really synergizes that well with an Ember Spirit. I think Void should have an alright lane actually. Just gonna have to max out Time Walk. He picks himself up a Quelling Blade soon. I think, he, I think he will. What are we missing out of this? He has to. He also needs to be conscious of the route. And the Spirit Lance, so. Yeah, got himself badly out of position there. So, hang, um, not, not great positioning from Void, but I don't think it's the end of the world with the first blood. I think it, I think this, this um, Radiant Top Lane could be really good. Having the Berserker's Call into Stomp. It's nice synergy, and vice versa for that matter, but nice synergy between these two heroes. I don't normally like dual melee off lanes, but I feel like this one works. And I definitely feel like it's going to be quite strong against this weird tri lane. Yeah, nice dual stomp. Uh, no. I, I don't think it's. I think. I guess actual skill call on this. Um, when he gets level 3. I think that's the sensible thing to skill. A lot of players seem to be maxing out Battle Hunger first. I think it's nice. Um, uh, nice. Why did he put it on the range? Because I think that was a misclick. Um, I think I think uh, the Battle Hunger is pretty good against uh, Wisp. He's not gonna really going to be last hitting. It's, it's a good sort of zoning spell. You need to be careful. These guys are out of mana. So I've gone through two mangoes already. I've got some regen being flown out for ET. Let's have a look at this safe this lane. Um, I think Shadowfin wins this matchup overall. I think Shadowfin could be aggressive early on, where a Storm can't be. It's not got the burst damage Shadowfin has with its raises. It doesn't have an escape either. Uh, sorry, it's a Storm Threat, that is, doesn't have an escape until he gets his ball lightning. Do this water, he's going to scatter this DD. He hasn't actually pushed this lane out first before giving the DD, so I wonder if perhaps should have just got the lane back up to the tower. Force Shadow Feet to last it up to the tower. Purifying Flames could be healing up Void. Yeah, so, so Void, I think Void does alright. It's, it's not an easy lane for him, but I, I think he holds his own. I think he's going to get enough out of it. He's not going to be building. Um, big farming items like Battle Fury, Maelstrom. 
but heavy goes more sort of a utility build because of Death Blade, Demand Star, nice during the Chronos phase. If you can't kill him, Chronos just burning up as much mana as possible. Pretty good. Mag's still got three mangoes, it's got a nice regen. It's interesting how mangoes have sort of given these max out mangoes to become sort of faint ones on off lanes, and I like it. Even though they sort of nerfed the uh, regen, that's interesting to say. Stormford just luring This is so. He's got. Oh, this is a really nice play. So Storm Spirit um, pushing up aggressively with this DD rune. Not. I the fact there's a punch here with a smoke. Um, of course, that was a smoke, so um, no, no rewards anyway, just sort of spot him. That was a really nice play from Shadowfeed <coughs> and Punch. Um, sorry, excuse me if my voice is going a wee bit, but yeah, just and he, uh, Shadow Fiend sort of lured these creeps up into the high ground, just allowed the lane to be pulled back a little bit. Um, and actually, that allowed the Punch to sort of get up here undetected because Storm Spirit sort of ran thinking he could get the kill on the Shadow Fiend. Something worth pointing out is that Shadow Fiend does have a few raindrops. Um, an item that I possibly neglect. Uh, I, you get it when you're buying an urn, but actually just a really valuable item against heroes with first magic damage like Storm Spirit and Shadow Fiend himself, Puck, you know, Quark, Lena, whatever. Not so much, not so much quite, but certainly the um, other ones. Um, yeah, um, yes, yeah, so it's really worth buying the item, and I must admit, I, I don't buy it very often. Um, I should do. That's a really nice stomp. Um, it's cool. No, no, it's like cool. Why? Um, I don't get this. I thought, like, if, if, if he'd skilled, cool. Gee, he hasn't, he's, he's level 4 now, if he'd skill call, I think that could be really good kill potential in this lane, and I haven't seen much evidence of that. Because he's got the um, the battle hunger, his, his, his mana is, he's going to struggle for mana, I think. He's so through his first mango. His battle hunger, I have to admit, is doing a fair amount of harass damage to Wisp, but it's not going to net them any kills, really. Storm Spirit trining up. Um, what was that? Coming up. Yeah, so he's going to stack himself. Actually, he's already done it once for some. Probably set a scout for him. I think he did that. But. Yeah, triple stack. Um, supports can stack too, but actually, got to do that. It's a nice, easy camp to stack. What's this? This camp here too. Someone's going to enjoy that later on. Shadow Fiend doing a little bit of shrining and farming himself. He was in pretty good health on. I feel like the shrine may have been over commitment there, but. Um, something else, yeah. Not, not being afraid to actually use the shrines. Often sort of feel like it's not worth using the shrine unless your entire team is there to go and uh, take advantage of the healing. But if you're a mid hero, particularly a hero like Storm Spirit, you've just got to. Um, Gotta keep your regen up, particularly your mana. I'm gonna attempt to take this triple stick. Right, this feels ambitious. Taking this triple stick, it's not got much help. And no mana to speak of. So I don't, I don't think you can actually finish this off very easily. No, I really don't. Oh gosh, what so happened there? Um, killing this grand punch. It's like they managed to take the. Uh, I'm just going pretty low. But level 5, he still doesn't score call. It's a skilled call. Um, this feels really surprising. I don't. The battle hunger may finish him off. Which I think it will. Ember Spirit not quite uh, respecting that TP. Clemency be coming in quite so soon. So like, yeah, he's gonna go finish off when he does this, this count. So, Storm Spirit, a little level 8 compared to Shafi's level 9. Shafi's looking pretty scary actually. He's got the Yule Scepter queued up. He's actually bought himself some more raindrops. I, I like this. Um, 
just go. So I think actually when we saw um, when Storm had that DD and when Pudge got the kill on him, I think Shadowfin would have died without those raindrops. Oh, crap, definitely. No engagement here. Stomp is down, so DD is going to fall. Another death. Um, we've also got this rotation here from Shadowfin. I, I, just, I just don't understand why he wouldn't skill call even just a value point in it. Well, he's, yeah, he's, he's struggling with the last hits, but let's push this lane out a bit. Now, if he has TP in, possibly just a little bit of jungle farm going. Can I see what he wants to do? Plays. Yeah, that's a bad but Oh, it is time for the runes. It's like PL, I'm not really that bothered about getting it. Or it's forgotten, I'm not sure. But PL feels pretty safe pushing out. They've got this ward here. Um, so I think PL's doing alright. Now, Void does have Chrono, and it looks like he was. I'm going to use Chrono there, but I don't know I see the animation for it. But, um, no, he's just holding it. If you use Chrono now, that sends the tower, you might be the, kill the illusion to get the tower damage on PL. Let's take one more tower aggro. You see Pudge coming in, so. And Shadow Feed. That, that rotation these rotations. This punch was scouted out. He yeah, was just going to fall back. And yeah, we see the uh, shadow feed pinging out the ward. Does reveal its location there. So yeah, not, nice map awareness actually from, uh, from Dyer. Must de de warding is something I'm not very good at. Um, just to sort of pay, paying sort of close attention to where there, there must be wards just based upon Enemy movements. Storm goes straight for the orchid, so this rope of the Magi is going into an Oblivion staff rather than into a Kaya. Why is still holding onto this crime sphere? That Pudge is in a bit of trouble here. It's getting chased down, it's pretty low. Another Spirit Lance comes out. What if Pop is Void going to Chrono or are you just saying no Pudge is alright? No crime being used. So, yeah, Pudge is perfectly safe. I think the temptation there for me might have been to use Chrono. Um, but actually, just observing that Pudge is fine. You can get out of there. Oracle's a pretty strong pick actually for this game. Um, actually, he's got such a he's got such long range. Not just such long range, but he's also got. Um, so many saves for um, Mr. Necrona. That was a nice berserk call. Finish off Pud. Oh, see, wow, I've seen the Pudd of coming in, and that was a beautiful three man chrono. It's going to be a triple kill. Really nice play, actually. Um, so, yeah, we saw um, Pudge running back uh, it was quite a long time ago now, but um, Temptation there uh, might be to use the chronosphere, and before he didn't, he withheld it. Um, and actually having that patience to withhold the chronosphere, waiting for a really nice triple kill opportunity, definitely worth it. Dyer's lineup can be sort of hyper progressive, and Void is playing a utility core, he's not building the Battle Fury or Maelstrom. He's, every time he's off chronosphere, off cooldown, definitely going to be looking for a kill. Two, two CPs coming in here. Time, just about time to backtrack. Is it your sector out on Shadowfiend? I've got to be careful with their positioning when you look at the AoE route. That's too aggressive. So I don't know if um, Stormfoot's looking for round two here. Let's see. 
Oh, I'm going to lose their tier one. The Oracle is going to forward. Are these guys going to disengage? No, it looks like they're ready to fight. They can get a good stomp off. <laughs> the Cyborg is going to be a sacrificial lamb here, fortunately. Yeah, I didn't feel that was really a fight they could take. I'm not quite sure why they thought they could do that. Um, between the two of them. But yeah, as I was saying earlier, um, do I have a, a lineup that can that want to be aggressive? They want to be looking for kills and never Cronus goes off cooldown. Got the Wisp relocate. It's just about online. Um, as used to pass, see where we used it actually. But uh, yeah, you've got the relocate. You've got Nemesis. You've got lots of mobility. So this is a team that's going to be looking for kills. Their vision. Um, and I thought because of their lineup, they want to be getting more aggressive wards out. Um, they've gone for this smoke blade, but they've got absolutely no vision. I, don't, I didn't see them use the scan either. And, yeah, so just quick reactions straight out there. So that's a lot of waste of time for this smoke, which could have been averted by just a ward or two. This ward now. PL, he, he senses is coming. They have this vision here. They saw that Storm Spirit um, was getting ganked. I'm not sure why Elder Titans were quite a slow to get out of there because he knew this was coming. Didn't have a TP. Um, but probably should have sort of headed over to the side shop and buy a TP and get out of there. But he not crew. <laughs> Maybe Storm Spirit is out of mana. Requiem of the Souls was blown on the Elder Titan, so. Nice, that's down. Time is money. Very close to his orchid. So PL, as he, he escaped from this bottom lane, which he was pushing out, he's now on top. Quite content pushing out this top lane. He knows where they all are on the map. These guys are still hanging around bottom. What a chronosphere. That was, feels like massive over commitment. Didn't need to use the chrono on that low axe. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. don't, don't think that was necessary at all. So this is I think good, good game sense. I think maybe a little bit slow to get out of there. <laughs> but he, um, he was already getting back. Most of these guys disappeared from the map. He was, tracks was already moving, the travel was rather already moving back. So yeah, like that. And actually he's pushed this wave out a long way. Got some chip damage done on this tower still at the Siege Creek, ridiculous, so quite a lot of chip damage on this town. It's got bottom. Oh yeah, a bit of vision out of the map, it's not overly impressive. Oh, Solid kill on Emster, one looks it. Storms not got much mana again. Um, I don't know if he gets out of this. So it's fine. He's fine because the Wisp has used relocate. And did he bring anyone back with that relocate? Or was it just a solo? Not sure what happened there. Let's see that. Um, <laughs> that's really nice. Um, quick reaction speeds from Storm again. Silencing the um, Shadow Fades before it gets wrecked on. I think actually he's, he's made the right decision not to go for this care. He's got the Orchid instead. He's been very greedy with his shrines. I think he's basically Dyer's used all of them by himself. And it's paying off for them. Meanwhile, we've got this PL, Etal, are pushing up bottom. Nice vision here, so PL is quite safe doing it. Does know the relocates down. Does know where the others are because we just saw him go on storm. He's gonna kill Fudge. Don't think he gets out of this though. It's a lot of goals. Good about to go to my shadow thing. Actually, not quite as much goals as I thought it would be. Just 388. Will be a bit more gold, but I guess shadow thing is. Let's have a look at the network. Yeah, he's a long way ahead at the moment. Where you see this, PL. 
recognise this rotation is coming in. So just A clicks of illusion double. So I'm going to aggro the uh, void. Void just finished off his death blade. PL, safe. So he's really nice, but he's pushed this pushed this lane out quite a long way. He's got a nice defense. Um, yeah, he's not really been using the jungle much. This is the first time I've seen him really using the jungle, and he's not really jungling, he's just taken a camp. Um, he's probably take this one as well. As he sort of like maybe moves to another lane, but he's he's given them these lanes pushed out before going into the jungle. Just making absolute yeah, good good um use of the map. Yeah, I've just seen the Elder Titan saying we need wards. Um this ward's been pinged out as well, so I just got a sentry he's gonna de-ward that because he should recognise that it's there. However, Storm Spirit straight in with the Orchid. <laughs> oh, sorry, a kill. Um, yeah, really nice play. And he's going for. Just like he's going for Bloodstone. Really like the fact he keeps uh, putting his items into his uh, backpack before bottling. Something I forget to do, and I know I shouldn't forget to do it. He are just constantly pressuring his lanes. The radiant vision's not amazing, but it's good uh, enough. And, and actually, the vision's where they need it um, to create space for PL. I'm going care of this dire vision here, though. So the dire do recognize see this tall team collapsing in on them. See that they, they are regrouping by this tier 2. Do get the D ward off. Hard to recognise after dying to storm. But yeah, so PR doesn't want to fight this. He can't do anything against this five man squad. These guys have quite a lot of team fight. No chronosphere's up, no requiem's up, so he's gone top again. And that's the right move. And again, these guys have wasted quite a lot of time they've got nothing out of this. They're not, they're not farming, they're looking for kills, but they're not getting any, uh, not getting any thing out of this, really. Deep ward, but... I see pushing up the tier twos. See this uh, dire team, now, they've walked all the way from here, and they're walking all the way to this top lane. All of that, the whole team, pretty much. And... And they know this they know this rotation's coming and now PR is just moving back. It's tier two, it's taking a lot of damage. But this is this is really this is really good play, I think, from Radiant. Um Dyer have this lineup that really want to be calling the shots. You you want to be using aggressive relocates to um, to fight with. You want to be using Ember Spirit to just sort of jump on enemies and and then not actually right into forcing them to react to their pushes, to their movements. So they're, they're forcing Dive to play on their terms. Part of for Blade Mail. Um, don't, really, don't, really, don't really agree with that choice, to be honest. Um, Part of are really frontlining this. Um, waste of that Yeah, punches are really frontline. It's like rather it goes for some kind of lockdown item. Probably an ATOS. Storm needs to disengage, it doesn't matter. They are going to lose axe. Very much gold. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, I'm not sure that Blade Mail pick up, but I think it's really that useful. In the see Ember Spirit, what, we're 23 minutes into the game now, and he's got a Battle Fury, and that's literally it. And, yeah, and you think, well, what's this giving you? It allows you to farm. But I really like the way Radiant aren't allowing them to farm. They're constantly pushing in these lanes. 
I think they'd need to move their vision line a bit more aggressively. It is very defensive at the moment. Dyer's is also very fairly defensive, so we'll see how the vision game works. Um, if if Ravens actually just get there some more vision out deeper into their side of the map. But yeah, Amber Battle Fury is not really doing anything for them though. I haven't really seen any decent chronos recently, but I haven't seen chrono been used for a while. Okay, I have 23 minutes into the game and all Void has is a display in a long way off his banter style. Storm has finished off his bloodstone. A lot of mana to work with. It's interesting to actually see the, uh, whatever you call it, the um, electric board that still works in the bottom of that. No Storm from uh, ET. Gonna chase this? Don't think he is. Like, the whole team just collapsing on him. Storms, ports, I've had a word of the match on. What's that for? Um, I have no idea. Um, Doesn't set decides to go for the TP. Nice little kill on the shadow fiend. Uh, Storm Spirit has reached this sort of, I guess, a like critical mass almost where you can get away with plays like this. And it's one of the reasons I said right at the beginning of the game that I didn't like Dyer's draft. I don't know what their lockdown is. It, it's Chronosphere, I don't have a bad hit really. Um, when Chronosphere onto one target, it's an Oracle. Okay, you might kill the axe on top of this as well, I think they will, but so what? I don't think it's... I don't think it's really all that big a deal, I mean, they've blown Chronosphere for it. And actually, PL can be quite aggressive here, because what have they got to really deal with them now? Shadowbeam's dead. Still a few seconds up, but he... But without the Chronosphere, I don't think... Um, I can do a whole lot. Beating on Dyer's top tower. Dyer's top tower is gone. Just a cold fog left behind. Okay, I'll go for a Lincoln's. I think actually storm these Lincoln's as well. Um, I think the Lincoln's should be really strong because what they're um set up. Okay, so Shadow Fiend has the side. He has a Yule Scepter. What else do they have that's targeted? Um, nothing, really. So, yeah. Lingus is a strong pickup, and without, without actually, if, if, if they can't initiate with Hex, um, they'll struggle with the Chronosphere coming in, but no. He hasn't got it. There's <laughs> still 45 seconds there. So I don't know why he's trying to, they're trying to be aggressive on this Storm Spirit, because there's nothing they can do on him. Because Ember Spirit's damage output's just, it's just not very good. And I really feel like if they've gone for a, a more traditional safe lane Agi carry, it would have been better. Um, alternatively, if, rather than running a tri lane, I think, get rid of the Pudge, and instead get something like an off lane Jakiro, um, sort of in the position four you can just create a bit more space for Void. And you've got big skills like Macrofire that can just dish out plenty of damage. And I hate to say this, but I think this game's over. I don't see a way back into it for Dyer. This pipe pickup is going to be massive. Requiem of Souls, Shadow Raises, provides a lot of damage reduction. MSP has only gone with that sort of magic damage build that's fallen out of vogue recently, but I think actually you probably should have done. 
while we get to Battle Fury, actually picking up some of the Mjolnir. Just add a little bit more uh, crowd control because like, this is on there really lacking. Hush, still trying to build this blade mail, but it's taking them a long time. I, I don't think it's really going to add much to his. Uh, I don't think it's going to add anything. Game slow down a little bit. But as I said earlier, I'd like to see Radiant pushing their vision line up, that's exactly what they've done. Taking over their jungle. This is about to expire, so they'll have no vision up here soon. Yeah, Blade Mail is finished and Pudge is queued up A4 style. Um, again, not. Not really an item choice. I like this game, and I don't, I don't, I don't know what it offers you. Okay, so uh, no, it does pass. He's starts to have a blink again. I'm not, not really a fan of this. It's not unless you can blink, dismember storm spirit, and just set up stuff for set up a chronosphere or whatever. I don't think it's really going to add much to. Dyer's line up, and I think it'd be much easier if they just got a. Uh... So, the yeah, upcoming invasion tower, isn't it? It's a grand star, of course, but this would take out no damage in that corner. It will fall here, but. Even so, he falls, but he's gonna make them fight for it and gets two kills himself. Still think it's worth it for PL. And that's Chronosphere Blow. Nice blink from Axe. Who's um... Who do you side the rice on? That's what you use. Only use it on the Lincoln Sphere, which is... <laughs> okay. Um, which is why it didn't work. So yeah, we've seen the value of the Lincoln Sphere, because he's self used I think, and then... Uh, Nothing to break the Lincolns with. Um, it's a really strong pickup from Storm Spirit. Like you see, actually, just that, that, that's a slight of this, really, just not doing a whole lot. You know, the Chronosphere's down. They're not really all that scared of it. Now, to my view, don't charges. Boy, miles off getting man to start. Yeah. However, BL has hit. I haven't really talked much about ET this game. Um, ET hasn't been out. He hasn't really had the uh, the sort of game where he's allowed to make big flashy plays. He's, he's used to salty a couple of times, but they haven't been. Uh, been more zoning naughties more than anything. So. Yeah, I just, I think, um, we had a bit of a rough time of it. But I think it's something we can't address, but it's just quite how much space he's created on the map. Um, for this team. I feel like he ought to be with his team here. And he's, he's got no way of getting to them anytime soon, because this fight is about to break out. But ET is one of the best team fight heroes. He hasn't got a great uh, deal of setup when I was Tyson. It's pretty great with heroes like Void, of course, but. He does have this ATOS, so. He, this, um, the radio team between them have quite a lot of. Um, disables, you've got the Orchid, you've got ET's array of them, Taunt, Oracle's Root. These guys just look like they're gonna want to disengage. Chronosphere is up. Nice to see the creeps just uh, pushing that lane quite happily. Doing a little bit of chip damage. I don't know what the, their game plan is here. Um, 
ET still just pushing this bottom lane. Um, these guys, as I thought, just sort of been hanging around here for a long time. I feel like they've been wasting quite a lot of time. There could have been, between them, they could have actually either grouped up and actually. Maybe look at them Roche, but I don't really talk about Roche at all. Um, I don't have the best Roche lineup. I might do die for that matter, I think. The West Tower and Void, they can take it relatively quickly, but it's still not. It's still not a particularly much of target. Okay, so Requiem kills an Oracle. Oh well. Meanwhile, Storm gets a Hemisphere, so it's a better trade. Radiant again. Yeah, you know, I really like my, oh, I really love the way Peel's playing this game. Constant pressure in lanes. He's just everywhere they have not. Nice double going out of the state. He knows that Requiem is down. Does get hexed up, so he's going to fall. Um, yeah, okay. Um, but again, I think that was a Bruno. No, it wasn't a Bruno, okay, but. Again, you have forced a, a big rotation bottom. I don't know what the questions guys are doing, though. They've really slowed down. That's a hell of a dominator, so. Has the extra stun. I just got a solar crest being built next. It's this stage of the game that I, I find most tedious personally in my own games. Like, um, this has been a really exciting game up to this point, and now I just feel like it's slowed down. Gosh, was that Chrome Speed used? Yeah, it was. So Void called Chrono, um, Storm Spirit in the Chrono, um, I guess Ember Spirit was there too. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Um, but they haven't, they haven't got enough damage. Actually, so much of this depends on the Shadow Beam being present and he wasn't there. No, Shadow Beam's finished off his BKB and queued up an axe. The only way Dyer win this is by is by making good use of Chrono. And I don't think they have. Um, all these Chrono Spheres we've seen have basically been on single targets. And I, I, I was really impressed with the Void right at the beginning of the game with that first Chrono. Just the patience to get a nice three man uh, Chrono Sphere. But since then, it's also been single targets and they've mostly been on the Oracle, the ET, and the Axe. Just your lowest priority heroes, basically. If you die, um, and the same goes for Requiem of Souls. We've seen Shadow Fiend deleting the Oracle a few times with Requiem, and it's not really what you want to be doing. You you want if you die, you want to be taking these team fights. They haven't been having pick offs. None of them have been of silence. They must recognise that they need more tools to be able to break this Lincoln Sphere. Void might have his um, Manta Star within the next five minutes or so. It's taken a long time. Let's see how big it goes. coming in here, that was massive. Unfortunately, Push does get the deny, but it was a really nice uh, better thing. There we go. Yeah, there we go. A lot of BKB used. There you go. Did finish off the PL. Clean up crew. That was a relocate, was that? Yeah, it was. He did get the shadow in the relocate. Um, <laughs> what the storm's doing here? Is this going to be an exploding eye in a sec? There we go. Um, the boss was delayed uh, stomp just for good measure. Right. Yeah, I feel like Die had a really good early game, but they've been pretty really scrappy since then. Storm Spirit, you see him walking, so it's a proper swagger, isn't it? Dyer's bottom barracks are under attack. 
probably stores their players, isn't it? You can just imagine the swagger as they're playing here, right? Look at me. Um, So that was really careless from Chanovin, not really respecting just quite how long of initiation range Storm has. So he has been forced to buy back. This is not a whole lot of damage he raises. I'm not doing much and I, I don't know if no, he didn't, didn't activate the pipe in that, but it's just the nature of an axe. I've really done a lot of damage. Meanwhile. War of attrition still going on, there's a siege creep wave. Actually these guys might take down the range tractors by themselves, I think they will. Get decent amount of damage on the uh, melee as well. There you go. Are we going to take down Storm here? What on earth is that Raccoon bomb? Okay, so... Wrecking the soul is premature. Um, Peel does die, but I, again, it's just not elegant um, to die. And the thing is, Wrecking the Souls is down, Chronosphere is down, Storm can probably clean up. That's exactly what it's going to do. Nice out of the again. Yeah, <laughs> um, what, one, of the, one of the really nice things about how Radiant's done this, or maybe perhaps how Die Happens done this, is is the way that they, um, Storm is just allowing himself to um, counter initiate. He's, he's letting them blow all their spells on low priority targets, then just allowing himself to uh, clean up the mess. Shiva's pick up as well, his axe is basically not going to die. Two best building hitters in the game clearly, pushing the high ground, just the two of them. They're not really in any trouble, but even so, this tower's gonna, not going to fall very quickly. This storm. Two melee axes. Healable damage. Where is Axe's mana going in this game? It just, just never seems to have any of it. Um, I only got a dip in the void, but the void's dead, so... There we go, there's another load of rats. Very nearly mechas. Not quite. Chrono is up. Nice, 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 nice. Um, Hex. Um, <laughs> Stop just as he changes. <sighs> Not a chance, I'm just going to be able to do much unless the Chrono comes out, which it does. Catch the PL. It's just no damage. Let's get some bashes, though. Bashes will work. Probably. An unnecessary death peel didn't need to hang around for quite as long as he did, but... I think my record number of bloodstone charges is 32. And I had that on a timber saw once, and it's an awful lot of fun. When you've got so much um, regen. So Storm's about to surpass my personal bloodstone record. I, feel, I don't play heroes that build bloodstones very often, but... Blackthorn is now finished as well, so we finished for a while actually. But as this so crest, what's more be dominated? Come on, we pick himself up an alpha wolf, try and pinch a dire siege group. But here we go, talk about the uh, <laughs> talk about these guys pushing the high ground axe and um. Accident ET, off lane partners. Gonna do the world's slowest motion. Still going on. Yeah, scout the astral, but. Motion at half, that's just exciting, isn't it? 
Yeah, just say they can't take down the road very quickly. Mm -hmm. Call to help. Now buyback is down for Shadow Fiend, so yeah, it does finish up his exit. Yeah, there you go. That was fun, wasn't it? So, can they finish the game now? <laughs> Storm! Not messing around, there you go. I think the Storm Spirit is a... He can get away with stuff, but he does need to be careful, because if he dies, it's an awful lot of gold. It's going to go the way of him. I don't think this game's over. I think it's nearly over. Nice stomp. Catches three, though. And that... Wow. Reckless assault did absolutely nothing. And that's the pipe of insight. Now I'm going to kill Storm. Yep, there it goes. 1,230 gold. Storm's, Storm's back. <laughs> World's quickest respawn. Um, yeah. Wow. Rally picked up on the pipe of insight. They can hit these buildings eventually. Oh, well, in fact, they gave the Aegis to um, ET. Let's face it, Storm didn't need it. Um, PL. Too slippery. So. Yeah, it's definitely the right here to pick up the Aegis. Let's face it, Storm and PL won't bear it. But it's not fine anyway. How many Yule Scepters are in this game? <laughs> and that's Megas. Yeah, you do. I agree with CM, I think we're just about done now. Um, let's watch this ancient tumble. Yeah, so really, really quite an exciting game. And there was a really slow point around the 30 minute mark where it just nothing seemed to happen for a while. I think Dyer played that really well in the beginning. The tri lane. Yeah, I didn't like it, and it didn't really work out for them. The off lane, for the, the Radiant off lane is, I think, could have be been better. I still don't know why Axe didn't skill, skill call earlier. I think they could have saved themselves a little bit of bother. Um, don't, I still don't like it. Still, a safe lane Ember Spirit just didn't work here, really. Um, void, still off lane can work, but. And I think it, I think Void was a perfect utility Void was a perfectly um, viable choice. Got some like storms in the game. It's just just wasn't a follow up, and these guys kept just blowing their big ultimates up on a on an oracle or something like. That. Who cares? It doesn't really matter, does it? Um, yeah, so a nice, nice team play. I think was, there's definitely <laughs> some definite times where there's some miscommunication between these guys, but overall, fun game to watch. So I think that's damage out, but not spectacular. But the building damage speaks for itself. I really like the way PL was playing that game. Just always on the other side of the map to where everyone else wasn't and constantly pressuring these lanes. I like I said, I, like, I mentioned this earlier, but I really like the way that Radiant were actually the ones in control. They allowed themselves to um, actually be forcing their rotations and die, which is not the way Die wants to play it. Or should have played it. And yeah, they, they lost control quite quickly, I think. To see the snowball effect. Anyway, um, fun game, fun to watch, and I am signing off.